I am uh, quite confident that as much as we enjoyed that, he enjoyed it more. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Brother Charles, so much. And uh, what a sweet grace we get this evening to be able to just uh, enjoy and, and celebrate the, the grace the Lord has given us in bringing this man to be a part of our fellowship for these past several years and uh, to be well known and, and a part of, of who we are here. Uh, we are doubly blessed this evening, uh, as I also get to introduce to you and, and bring forth uh, a little bit of information from our team uh, that went to Guatemala that you all supported. I just want to read one verse, <coughs> and then we'll intro the video, so I hope that's ready. Uh, the theme for the team going down, as we met prior to, was Philippians 1.27. Uh, and it was just simply this, to conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear of you, that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And the point of that was, even if we did many wonderful tasks, if we failed to accomplish that, then the trip was a wash. Uh, and with that mindset going in, I just want to encourage you how well uh, Community Baptist Church's team that you'll get to meet tonight if you don't already know all, that, all of those that went, uh, how well they did in accomplishing that, coming together with just a sweet spirit, unified in, in pursuing after those things. And so it was a blessing uh, to your pastor's heart. I hope it will be a blessing to you all tonight to hear more of that. We have a short pictorial video that we're going to show, and then we'll get right to it. At this point, we're going to be excited to hear the 3D version uh, from our team while they continue to work on maybe being able to see that towards the end of our presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and ask if our team uh, will join us up here, and we will get the, as I said, 3D version rather than the flat version uh, that we were going to begin with, which I think is much better. Uh, on that is the team functioning in a, in a variety of different settings. Uh, there was so much going on down there uh, at different times and on the same day where I would be teaching some pastors while others were handling different aspects of the clinic, while others were building things, while others were doing different and various ministry tasks within the churches that we were a part of. And this was happening uh, at, at a fairly... Uh, fast pace in the sense that you'd have moments of, of long waiting for those things to begin or long car rides and then all of a sudden it, it would get really busy and so difficult circumstances not the normal pace and expectations that we have uh, here in America and so just super uh, grateful for this group and how they came together to accomplish those things. So I'm going to let Brother Norm uh, begin by sharing a little bit of that experience. I'm laughing on the inside tremendously because one of the things that I've heard for years and years from missionaries and from uh, short-term mission groups is be flexible. <laughs> and uh, you never know what's going to happen, especially when you go to uh, another culture and a third world especially. You never know what's going to happen in the United States either. So, you know, <laughs> be flexible. Well, I was, went this year... Uh, anticipating getting some uh, cabinet doors built and improving some things in the cabinets in the kitchen of the the uh, mission center as well as being able to take in a, a lot of services uh, in the churches <clears throat> be flexible <laughs> Montezuma decided to take his revenge so I didn't I think I wanted to take that hour plus bumpy ride to the church. <laughs> so I stayed and built cabinet doors, <laughs> which I enjoy doing, but uh, you know, it wasn't everything that I planned to do. But be flexible. You know, David said in the, in the Psalms, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to be a rich, influential man in the world. And uh, I just plain enjoyed building cabinet doors, uh, even though I missed out on a lot of the services. Um, be flexible. You know, God knows what he wants and what he wants you to do and how he wants to use you. 
and sometimes he uses you in a very un unexpected way, you know. But, praise God, we uh, got the cabinet doors done, and there was a lot of supposedly uh, spiritual growth that happened among the people. That's what we're looking for. Uh, no matter what you do, what you say, where you, where, whatever it is, you know, when you go with a group like this, you're kind of living in a fishbowl. And uh, you just have to remember, do it all to the glory of God and be flexible. The two things that stood out to me on this trip that I probably spent the most time with was... Um, I wrote out hundreds and hundreds of tracks with name, address, and phone number, and I passed them out to hundreds of children. And I, at one night at dinner, I said, I wish I had a tracker, you know, to find out where they ended up and whose hands they went through. And the other thing that really touched my heart was that we attended services with five times with the church in San Bernardino, which was probably... 13 or 14 miles away, but it was an hour bus ride. And, um, and they became like our church family. I mean, we went there Sunday morning, and then Philip preached Monday through Thursday. We went there three times. They came with us. And um, it really touched my heart, the relationships, that even though we were thousands of miles away, we were all part of the family of God. Um, I'm just going to read some Bible verses. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Captain Santa Claus, <laughs> singing with thankfulness in your hearts, to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. And also Mark 10, 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. And he took them in his arms and began blessing them, laying his hands on them. Thank you. Hello. Just a moment. I'm going to get my phone out. Um, so I first want to say thank you to everyone that supported us and encouraged us. Um, the spaghetti dinner was probably my favorite because we had over 30 desserts and it was just really sweet to see everyone um, put in a hand and to serve and to help and encourage us. Um, the Lord was super kind to provide just the team that he did. Um, it was a privilege to go. Um, I definitely didn't know what to expect in Guatemala. Um, something that I appreciated was going to a culturally preserved part of Guatemala. Um, there was nothing American but us and Mr. Ron Maggard. Um, that was really just sweet to see um, that the Lord's Church is thriving in Guatemala, and that's something that we want to be a part of. Um, so each day we would set up clinic, we would play with the kids, we would gather in groups and um, play soccer for three hours and just love on the kids. Lisi would come over. Um, because they don't know any, any English. So uh, we had translators. Lisi would come. She would talk. She would um, kind of Sunday school style, um, just start sharing the gospel with these students. Um, there was a really awesome day where we got to go into a school, and the director opened up the classrooms and let us go into the rooms. 
Um, there was a couple of them that went. Um, they just shared the gospel. They got to pray with the students, hand out crosses. Um, that was just an open door that was given to us. Um, and that day, we got to play soccer, play games. Um, the clinic was open, and then we returned that night to a Bible study, and there were teachers there from that school that had come. And um, that was encouraging for me to see, just that they are developing relationships. Uh, there's Bible studies going on. There's clinics planted where we want to connect people to churches. Um, so we're not just sharing the gospel and leaving. We are connecting them to a local body um, where pastors are coming and feeding them. Um, which was another um, just privilege to see Pastor Philip um, just pour into these men in Guatemala that desired more training or more resources. Um, so thankfully we had translators um, and thankfully I've heard good stories from Joe and Pastor Philip that they're asking good questions. Um, one guy asked how to spot either a wolf or a false teacher, which is really, really cool um, that he would ask a question like that, that he would know um, that he wants to see, have his lens, his biblical lens on, on how to spot that there in Guatemala um, and hopefully fight against that. Um, there was one story in particular for me that was really sweet. Um, there's a 16 year old girl sitting next to me in church and um, she was writing in her Bible. She had it all highlighted. She knew where she was going, what she was doing. She had notes. Um, so at the end of the service, I had a translator come over and so knowing me I asked her probably 50 questions in five minutes and she was really uncomfortable but getting to know her and asking her questions she um, basically was telling me that her parents come sometimes but I was asking her why she wrote in her Bible just that she studied on her own or and she said that she studies it so that she can share it with her family um, and so being in Guatemala, seeing churches that are growing, their flock, that's obvious fruit that she's growing and thriving in the word and desiring to share with her family, probably, hopefully, Lord willing, her friends. Um, and so we just see by the maturity of the flock, Lord willing, the maturity of the church in general. Um, so that was encouraging. Her name is Alice. So if you think of Alice, you can pray for Alice. Um, I don't know the situation in her home, but... That was my favorite moment of the trip, um, just to connect with her. I hope that I meet her again, see her again, get to connect with her again one day. Um, I want to share Colossians 1.28 with you. We proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom, so that we may present every man complete in Christ. Um, so that's one-on-one, -on -one, the teaching in the church, admonishing, growing, um, that we would present them man complete in Christ um, and that many of you would join us next year it was so much fun I have so many stories and we have so many stories to share with you funny and serious um, I hope that you would come start practicing your Spanish um, start asking your Spanish friends questions turn your phone to the Spanish setting and yeah so come with us please thanks Hi. I think my favorite um, day of the trip was Tuesday, which is the day that we stayed um, back um, and ministered to the people in Shehawoop. Um, that might be because that was the day before I realized just how ticked off at us Montezuma still is. Uh, <laughs> I felt well on Tuesday, um, but it was the day that um, after we had um, spent the morning playing with kids and um, uh, working, you know, just talking to people that were waiting in the clinic, um, uh, some of the team decided to go on a truck ride up the mountain. Um, that was mostly for Philip's benefit because he wasn't with us when we had hiked up the mountain uh, two days before. Some of us were like, nope, seeing the top of the mountain, uh, we're good. I think we'll just stay here. It's going to rain. <laughs> it's going to rain on you people riding the back of a truck. Um, so um, I stayed behind, and there were a whole bunch of kids who lived right there in the area um, who wanted to play. And, of course, they came up, and they're trying to talk to me, and they're, they're saying things like, boobless, boobless, boobless. 
I got nothing, guys. What are we talking about? And they, they wanted me, they, they figured, they knew what was inside the ministry house, and they wanted me to go get some bubbles to play with. So I played with them. Uh, pelota, pelota, pelota. I got, they're like, you know. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, yeah, a soccer ball. And so I'd come inside and say, it's okay if I take a soccer ball out with these? And um, Carlos, the cook, was, talked to him very sternly. It's like, no, you have to bring this ball back. He's like, they never bring the ball back. You have to bring the ball. You have to make sure they bring the ball back. So anyhow, I played with the kids for, for about an hour or two, and um, it was awesome. And, you know, it got into... Um, they were looking through the pictures on my phone. They were asking me what my name was. They were practicing my name over and over and over again. Then they asked me my last name, and I'm like, this is going to come back to me. So a um, couple days, well, I guess it was the next day, um, when I was feeling quite unwell, um, Norm talked about it being like a fishbowl when you're not feeling well. Well, we had windows um, out the back that we had to keep open to get any air circulation. And there was a troop of kids out behind the windows saying, Donna, Donna. <laughs> no, nobody here by that name. <laughs> Go away, please. <laughs> um, but um, I felt that the kids were a huge untapped resource for um, the church, and I'm very anxious to talk more um, with Brother Ron about this because um, what I've seen over and over again in my visits to where Compassion works and to, to other places I've been is that um, the children want to come, whether it's to use your soccer ball or your bubbles or just to see what's going on, and they get drawn into um, just being comfortable hanging out at the church and being at the church and get drawn into um, being um, discipled at the church. And then their parents might come, and then it's a whole outreach to the community. And so just from my perspective, seeing um, the, the possibilities there um, was really um, encouraging to me. Um, the verses that um, spoke to me James 2.5, um, listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom he has promised to those who love him? And Matthew 19.14, Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And I've always felt um, strongly called to ministry to children in poverty and um, this this trip has it's raised more questions I think than um, it's answered um, but it has um, made me feel like I really have to be searching a little more for um, what my role is to be so. hello hello knock knock just kidding. I'm not going to say that. Um, no, no. No knock-knock jokes. Um, I, my role was to kind of shadow Pastor Philip throughout, um, throughout the week in his teaching sessions and his discipleship sessions. And just one quick real story, and then I'll say some serious stuff. We were, uh, I was on a four-wheeler, and Pastor Philip was on a dirt bike riding up the mountain. And going up the mountain was great, but coming down was a little bit difficult. But I'm not going to talk about what he thinks I'm going to talk about. So we get to this one point where it's super, really, like, vertical almost. Like, it was really elevated. And I get to a point where I'm full throttle. And all of a sudden, my quad, like, comes to a stop and starts going backwards as I'm going full throttle forward. And I'm like, oh, this is embarrassing. So I get off, and I'm, like, running next to it, trying to push it uphill. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, no. And then I realize when Pastor Philip gets to the same spot I was at, his dirt bike did the exact same thing. So I felt a lot better when I realized <laughs> gravity was going against him just as much as it was going against me. That made me feel a little bit better. But um, like I said, my role was to kind of shadow Pastor Philip. And it was just a sweet time being able to see um, 
really the, the true believers who were there and the men who were already in leadership and pastoral roles in Guatemala, just the hunger for the word that they wanted to learn so that they can shepherd their sheep that they've already been entrusted to, even though they may even though they may lack some qualifications, they were already in those positions. So they really wanted to learn. And it was really a good time for me to be able to see and, and hear and glean and really learn from the teachings of Pastor Philip as he was teaching these men and telling them what to look for and how to study. And it was just a really good time of one-on-one, -on -one, um, one-on-two, one-on-three. Those intimate sessions were really awesome that I got to experience those. And um, one thing that really stood out to me about really the people we were with in Guatemala was, like I just mentioned, a hunger for the word um, that you just don't really see here, um, that I don't personally see here. Um, like wanting to know, teach me what does this mean? Explain this to me. I want to know what it means. I have a hunger for it. And I don't, that's, that's rare to see here. Um, but that doesn't mean that so that, the, seeing that is an encouragement for me to want to go back and to want to have those conversations with those people in the van or on the truck or while we're walking or while we're just sitting around eating or something. So it's easy to kind of talk about the Lord there, but it doesn't mean we're not called to share the gospel here. And the need for the gospel is equal whether the people are hungering for it or not. The need is still there. And the Great Commission doesn't say, go to foreign lands only, it says go. And my fear would be that myself and the group behind me and the group in front of me would look at this week and that we went to Guatemala and kind of check a box or say, oh, we're done for this year, we'll go again next year and not continue to share the gospel as though we've been called to. Um, so that would be... That's my fear that would happen in my own life and in all of us. So I would hope that that wouldn't happen, that we would continue to share the gospel and love on people the same way that, that we did in Guatemala. There's nothing different. There's human souls that are um, at stake. So that would be my encouragement. Amen. There you go. Hello. My name is Lizzie Comeres. For those of you that don't, do not know me, I am Jessica's mom. And um, this mission trip for me was amazing. Uh, once you are called to be a missionary, you are a missionary for life, forever. Uh, one of the verses that I will love, that I love is, uh, is in Colossians 4, 3, that is say, praying that God will open to us a door to share the mystery of Christ. It was wonderful when my daughter Jessica told me about this trip to Guatemala because I have really been praying uh, that the Lord will give me back in the mission field. And I say that it means because for those that know that, or you that know me, uh, I was called to the mission, be a missionary in 1980s in this church. I was baptized in the church in 1981. And uh, it wasn't long ago um, after that that uh, my husband and I, we went to college. And then we were in the way to the mission field in Paraguay, where we were there for 10 years. It was a blessing. After coming back, uh, we have been all over. So I continue, I have been continue praying that God will open a door for me. And uh, so that's why this means so much to me. Uh, one of the verses that I say to myself all the time is, uh, as I was praying, it's in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, which it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and do not lean in your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will guide your path. So I started to trust in the Lord, and uh, he said one day to me, Why are you worried about it? I am here, I'm going to provide, and I'm going to open a door. And that's when I find out about this Guatemala trip. It was amazing. One of the things that really blessed me also is that some of these people I do not know. And uh, I just got in this group, and we took off, and we just become a family. We watch each other, we care for each other, and we will be here for each other for as long as the Lord has us together. Uh, 
When I was in the mission field, uh, one of the things that impressed me the most, and I, I say impressed because in Paraguay where we were working, yeah, it was a little bit different, but right from the building that we were staying, it's a guy that every morning he will be singing and praising the Lord. And he was pushing this little car that it looks like a, uh, almost a bicycle with the little bats. And he would work so hard to push these little bats over and, and all up in the hill. And uh, when I will see him, he's praising the Lord. And one day we were all outside there, and Pastor was there, and this guy, I got to see what he was doing, and he was selling like a snow cone with vegetables, some, and others with fruit, depending on what you wanted. So I ordered one with vegetables because I love veggies. Well, when I, I told him, put everything that you want in there. So when I tried that, I said, ooh, no. So I pass it out. Then I, wore, I ordered a sweet one with fruit and all this stuff. Oh, that was yummy. So to tell you this about this guy, in the morning, in the dark, he's getting up, praising God. No power, no water, no food. He had to get up and go and work and make his money this way for, to take care of his family. And I was thinking back then when I am home here, no long ago we had a, a storm that we lost the power. And you know, the power company is running there all like crazy, trying to give power to everybody that, you know, that needs power. And people are complaining. This guy is not complaining. His wife was getting up early to make coffee. And how did she make her to make coffee? By getting some wood and just with the fire and putting hot water and making coffee. No. Oh my goodness gracious, I go there and I don't want to leave. I just want to come back. A missionary is a person that is willing to go. You have the heart for these people. And every time that I go to the mission field, a little piece of my heart is back wherever I go. This time, half of my heart is gone. It's there. So I do have to go back. I just want to tell you that uh, uh, one of the things that I encourage you to all the church is that we don't, we don't need much. All we have to do is, like Jenna say, well, let's get together, let's raise money, and let's get together because God wants people with a loving heart, a willing heart. He will provide the rest. So let's get involved. Guatemala is waiting for us. I am ready to help anybody with Spanish as I can. And uh, let's keep on praying and that we can touch hearts and get the people there that need the help and share the gospel and that many souls will become to know Jesus Christ like he wants us to be. We are missionaries and we are here for that. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lisi. I was thinking uh, just a second ago how uh, similar, well, what we do is, is, is the same as what they do. Um, I get up in the morning and um, get ready for work and drive to work. Um, they get up in the morning and uh, they get ready for work and they walk up the mountain with their machete. And then uh, a little later in the day, they walk down the mountain with a, with a bunch of bananas or two on their back or a load of wood but you know it's uh, whether you're um, going to work in a factory or going to work up on a mountain banana field um, we're still same people we still need the same God we still had the same human desires uh, I thought that was interesting well I don't believe anything happens by accident uh, I believe everything is a God thing and as I was thinking about what I should say to that tonight, I, I got I picked up a Bible in the house. Just we have a hundred of them, maybe sixty. But anyway, we have a lot of Bibles in the house, and I just picked up one that I'd never picked up or never used before. And my wife has it, and it's um, and because I was looking for something to to say out of uh, Philippians one twenty seven. And this particular translation had this to say. It starts out, whatever happens. 
This is the, in the NIV. It says, whatever happens. That's my first point. And my second point is this. Stand firm in one spirit. And that's what we had to do in, uh, in Guatemala. I'm so glad we went back. Whatever happened, and believe me, a lot of whatever happened. Stand firm in the faith. Um, I have a list of eight things that whatever happened taught me in Guatemala. And I'm not going to uh, give them to you tonight. But um, one thing that uh, whatever happened taught me was that Sunday afternoon we took a walk up to the butter uh, up to the waterfalls, and uh, uh, of course, by the time I got there, I was, I was pretty worn out. Uh, and uh, they told me it was downhill all the way back, but that wasn't so. Um, but I wanted to get a really good picture of the whole group uh, by the uh, at the waterfall, so. I saw a nice rock over there, a big rock, and that I wanted to climb up so I could get a good shot of the whole group. And uh, I got up there, but I was, you ever been on a horse and ended up looking at the tail? That's how I was on the rock. And there was no way I could get turned around. So I humbly got back on my belly and slid down the rock. <laughs> and that taught me this. That there's some things that you can't do and that you not, ought, ought not even try to do. <laughs> Fortunately, um, I did get down without breaking anything. Uh, I didn't get sick, didn't get bit by mosquitoes or spiders. Uh, we had a really good time. And there was eight things that I learned. And one of them is that uh, I shouldn't do things that I know I can't do. But I want, just want to thank you for being a part of this trip. Your part was obeying God, being willing to obey God, obeying God, and loving us and loving them as much as you love God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. All the plants are bothering me. Um, I just want to thank everyone <clears throat> for your gifts and for your love for us. We could never have taken this trip without you. And it takes a team, and not just this team up here. I mean, this whole, ch <clears throat> this whole church is a team. And um, <clears throat> I can't. Um, for us to fulfill the Great Commission, which is to go into all the world, and uh, we could not do it without you. So I thank you for your gifts of your, uh, your monies that you gave, your prayers that sustained us and helped us prepare and for your love for us and for uh, the love for God, that you would um, do what you do to allow us to go. So I thank you very much, and the whole team thanks you. <laughs> OK, I am getting a thumbs up signal. Uh, which means that now having seen the 3D version, uh, you'll get to see the flat screen, we hope. I'm going to stand here until it starts playing, and uh, then I'll come down, and we'll just get a few minutes with the video that they had prepared. Gospel in 
the gospel fragrance in words the sea of my soul is called when it's heard peace to the broken the captive set free may the gospel of jesus wash over me the gospel the gospel my freedom explained no more stop these garments i'm wearing these stains the old man is missing the new man is free may the gospel of jesus wash over me She's good and she's true She cost quite a fortune To make all things new So bring in with faith And out with his peace Make the gospel of Jesus Watch over me dismiss us in prayer. I am going to ask that the team uh, would please be at the back of the church so that you can follow up with other questions and things uh, with them. But as we do so, I do I just want to kind of give you, uh, it, there's so many things that we could share, so many uh, opportunities from uh, some of them you've heard, many of them there's no way to fit into a single evening. Uh, but seeing those things, this, this was our encouragement, and I encourage you all with this. In Mark chapter 4, the Lord speaks of, of what the kingdom of God is like, and he says this in verses 26 to 29. And he was saying, the kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. And he goes to bed at night, and he gets up by day, and the seed sprouts and grows, how he himself does not know. For the soil produces crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. But when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. The basis behind that is so many times I hear in church that, that we want to have a report uh, that's giving tangible, uh, we saw this happen or experience that, and there was those things. I don't want to take from that. But more than that, there were seeds planted that you all uh, had as equal um, 
of a role uh, in the planting of those seeds in a place that many of you have never been and may never go, but you are willing to support with both prayer, finances, and other ways to send this group that you all got a brief glimpse uh, of this evening uh, of what that trip was like. And, and through them, uh, we know that we were faithful to uh, take God's word, uh, to spread it to a place uh, where it was received uh, because we spread it because of nothing else. And, and more than that, in 1 Corinthians 2, Paul says very clearly, look, one of us plants, the other waters, but it's God who gives the increase. Uh, we've seen that so many times. And so I encourage you for this group, for, for future things, uh, it's not just about the tangible, uh, although we do enjoy hearing uh, some of the ins and outs and the funny stories and the other things that happened. Uh, I can tell you that we had opportunity to go and sow seed, to plow fields, to water uh, that which was already there. And that was the point of the trip. It was, it was a wonderful grace for this team and for me to be able to be a part of it uh, and to share just that briefly with you this evening that, that God is faithful and uh, he is at work uh, in, in this world. Uh, and his gospel is going forth. And, and as Jenna and the others had mentioned, what an awesome and amazing thing to go to a different country, different language, different culture, and see the bride of Christ uh, in all of her frailty and beauty and, and splendor uh, going forth. And so as we close with prayer this evening, I do want to encourage your hearts just to know that, that God is faithful uh, in all things. Be reminded of that, even as we from many uh, thousands of miles away uh, get to simply see pictures and hear accounts of memories. Uh, today in Guatemala, there were church services that were being held where the gospel was being taught, God's word was being proclaimed, and that is a sweet, sweet truth for, for us who got to experience that and to share with you this evening. Would you pray with me? Lord, we are thankful for your faithfulness. Lord, we are frail and we are fragile. Lord, so many things that we are confronted with, uh, we cannot see the other side. Lord, we confess to you uh, our insufficiency. And yet, Lord, we also rest in your sufficiency that as we uh, go forth to faithfully do as you have told, Lord, that you yourself uh, take care of the rest, that you handle uh, how that growth comes about. It's yours to do. Lord, you call us to be faithful. And I thank you for this group of men and women uh, who have faithfully served you in this endeavor. Uh, but Lord, more than that, I thank you for the, for the glimpse we have of your faithfulness as we got to meet your bride in Guatemala, as we got to see uh, so much that is going on uh, just as it ought to be. And we are so thankful for that. Lord, we do ask uh, just for, for your continued uh, grace and wisdom for us in the, in the pursuit of, of missions, that you would continue to give clarity and opportunity. And Lord, that you would continue to open our hearts to the willingness and the faithfulness that you command of us. Lord, we ask for your strength in this, and we ask for it in your son Christ's name. Amen.